with day and false are the news headlines. Tunubu El and Hati Sobo loses after UK trip. And on the alleged rape, Benue government closes case against lecturer over deaths of Ochanya. Declaration of assets is mandatory for all public office orders, says Ipe Azu. And on business reports, federal government approves 1.4 billion US dollars for rehabilitation of worry Cardinal refineries. FEC approves 11.19 billion naira, 90 billion US dollars for coastal rail projects. Land use charge, legal state government announces discount for early payments. And now we move to foreign scene. More than 200 million coronavirus cases worldwide AFP tally. Lastly, on sport news, Ellen Olympic Games, Jamaica's top sea era banned for posting footage of a victory. And lastly, Leicester for far now suffers broken leg. Now the news in details. Tunubu Hill and Hadi Sobo loses after UK trip. The Lagos State Governor Babaji De Sobolu on Wednesday said the national leader of the all ruling Progressive Congress FPC Bola Tunubu is ill and healthy. Sobolu disclosed this while briefing journalists at the Lagos House Ikeja on his visit to the FPC national leader in London, the United Kingdom, on Tuesday amid rumours that Tunubu was sick and hospitalised. A few days ago, social media was awash that Tunubu was undergoing major surgery in Maryland, the United States, over an undisclosed illness. But the governor debunked the rumours, adding that he and Tunubu both held talks on happenings in FAC and across the country. To buttress his point, the Lagos State Governor also shared pictures of him explaining something to party national leader. On when Tinubu would likely return to Nigeria, the governor didn't give any specific date. Rather, he said the episode leader would decide when he will return for his foreign trip. On alleged rape, Benio government disclosed Benue government closes case against lecturer over death of Ochanya. After calling eight witnesses, the Benue state government on Wednesday closed its prosecution of a suspended senior lecturer at the Benue State Polytechnic, Ubokolo Andrew Oduja, who was alleged to have raped to death 13 year old girl Ochanya Obanje. Mr. Oduja's son, Victor, who is now at large, is a second suspect in the case, but the police are yet to, the, to arrest or even declare him wanted. The government had on October 10, 2019, arrested Mr. Obuja, a 57-year-old man, before a Makodi High Court on a four-count charge bordering on rape and murder of Ms. Obanje. At Wednesday's proceedings, the Director of Public Prosecution in the state, Peter Okande, led the eight witness of a photojournalist in his evidence in chief. Earlier, a video cassette was played before the court where the late Onchanya said Mr. Obuja and his fugitive son, Victor, serially raped her until she fell ill and was admitted at the Federal Medical Center in Makodi for two months. In his testimony, the journalist informed the trial judge, Justice Augustine, that he interviewed the deceased teenager at the premises in August 2018 when Mr. Obuja was forced to arraign an upper area court in Makodi. However, Mr. Obuja's lawyer, Hebel Onoja, objected to the admissibility of the video cassette. Mr. Onoja argued that he was not properly served with a copy of the video recording querying the mode of service of the evidence. But upon an appeal by the trial judge to both lawyers in the suit for an accelerated hearing, the defendant counsel withdrew his objection, paving the way for the judge to admit the piece of evidence. Subsequently, the prosecuting lawyer, Mr. Okande, closed the, closed the state government's case against Mr. Obuja. 
In his reaction, Mr. Obuja's lawyer sought an adjournment to enable his client to prepare for his defense. Thereafter, Justice, Justice Augustine adjourned the case to October 8, 2021 for the defendant to commence his defense. And still on the news report, declaration of assets is mandatory for all public office order, says Ikwe Azu. The governor of Abia State, Okeze Ikwe Azu, has reminded public office orders in the state that it is not only proper but also mandatory for them to declare their assets before beginning to function in their official capacities and has directed the secretary to the state government and other relevant officers to ensure that every public officer complies with the constitutional requirement for asset declaration. The governor said this while greeting a delegation led by Mr. Abel Sunday, the recently appointed state director Code of Conduct Bureau, CCB, Abia State, who paid him a visit at the government's lodge in Aba. He stated that going forward, no public official would be sworn in until there is proof that he or she has declared his assets. Governor Ike Azu, on the other hand, or the Code of Conduct Bureau to play the role of enabler by identifying wills to encourage individuals to willingly declare their assets through capacity building, seminars and other means. He said that despite its roles, as a watchdog, the Code of Conduct Bureau should conduct itself in, in a friendly manner so as not to scare people away, and that he recognizes the Bureau's critical role in handling public officials accountable. If public official, officials continue to perceive the Code of Conduct Bureau as a stumbling block, he claims they will constantly devise ways to avoid declaring their, their holdings. Ike Azu wouldn't state that he is dedicated to providing an, an enabling environment for CCB to operate in, state, in the state, congratulated the state director on his appointment and advised him to consider Abia as a second home after, after serving as a youth court member in the state several years ago. Honorable Chimaobi, a BCK, Member of the House of Representatives representing Abia, Abba North and Abba South Federal Constituency and retired Honorable Asiforo Okere, State Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, were among those who observed the ceremony. And with that, we move to business reports. Federal government approves 1.4 billion US dollars for rehabilitation of Wari Cardinal refineries. The Federal Executive Council has approved contract for the rehabilitation of Wari and Cardinal refineries at a cost of 1.4 US, um, US billion dollars. The breakdown shows that 894 million US dollars is earmarked for the Wari refinery and 586 million US dollars for Cardinal refinery. The Minister of State for Petroleum, Tim Fred Silva, to state house correspondents after the Federal Executive Council meeting shared by the Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo on Wednesday. According to Mr. Shiva, the rehabilitation of the refineries will be carried out in three phases. Nigeria has four refineries, including two in Port Harcourt, but all have struggled to fashion optimally as the country continues to import petroleum products. Rehabilitation is expected to turn around the refineries and set them up to meet national oil demands. In June, Managing Director of NNPC, the National Oil Company, Mr. Mele Kiyari, said the rehabilitation of the refineries in conjunction with private efforts such as the Dangote refinery will transform Nigeria into a hub of petroleum products and supply. The rehabilitation sources can also have a positive impact on the street level price of petroleum products such as petrol. Again, still on the FEC meeting, FEC approves a level for 17 billion US dollar coastal rail project. The Federal Executive Council has approved the sum of 11.17 billion US dollars for a coastal rail project that is expected to link all of Nigeria's coastal 
cities and six years. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, disclosed this while briefing State House correspondents after the virtual press meeting presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo at the presidential villa Abuja. Mohammed said that the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, presented two memos which had to do with federal government's commitment to expanding and consolidating on rail projects. Mohammed said that under the former administration of President Gulod Jolata, approval was given but nothing was done. Again, Lagos State Government announces discount for early payments of land use charge. The Lagos State Ministry of Finance has announced 15% discount for all land use charge bills paid within 30 days after receipt of bill. The Commissioner for Finance, Dr. Rabiu Olowo, who stated this in his office at Alawusa Ikeja, also revealed that early payment of the land use charge within the stipulated period in the month notice would exclude owners of such properties from payment of accumulated funds arising from the late payments. While saying that payment of land use charge bills made after 30 days and not Beyond 45 days of receipt of bills attract no discounts, the Commissioner availed that payments between 45 calendar days and 75 calendar days after receipt of bills attract 10% increase in charge payable. According to the Commissioner, payments between 75 calendar days and 105 calendar days of receipt of bills attract 20% increase in charge payable. Stressing that payments between one to five calendar days and one to thirty-five calendar days after re after receipt of pay of bill attract fifty percent increase in charge payable and cost of enforcement. Doctor Olowo also revealed that land use charge payments not made after one to thirty-five calendar days implies that such properties will be liable to receivership by the state or its appointed agent until all outstanding taxes, penalties and administrative charges are paid. He advised residents of the state to explore the WhatsApp platform of the Lagos Online Assistance We will be going on a short break and then when we come back, the news continue. He advised residents of the state to explore the WhatsApp platform of the Lagos Online Assistant Lola on the WhatsApp number to make payments for the land use charge in a more convenient manner. We will begin on a short break and when we come back, the news continue www.lola.ng or luc.lagostate.gov.ng Lola, the easiest way to pay your Lagos State land use charge. Always remember, Good news to all Lagos residents, especially owners of landed properties. Payment of land use charge has now been made easy through an online platform known as Lola. Lola is Lagos online assistance platform where payment of land use charge is possible through a WhatsApp only message on 0815-433-3883. This Lola platform initiated by the Lagos State Ministry of Finance will make the payment of land use charge possible anytime, any day and anywhere where without any third party involvement for more information please visit www.lola.ng or luc.lagostate.gov.ng lola the easiest way to pay your lagos state land use charge always remember welcome back from that break 
ever doubt to move to a foreign scene. More than 200 million coronavirus cases worldwide, AFP tally. More than 200 million cases of COVID-19 have now been registered worldwide since the novel coronavirus emerged in China in December 2019, according to a tally from the official source file compiled by AFP on Thursday. At least 200,065 200, cases have been officially recorded, but the actual number is believed to be even higher since a large number of less severe or systematic cases remain undetected despite, un, despite intensified testing in many countries. The number of infections is currently rising sharply, differing primarily by the spread of the highly contagious Delta variant, but the number of deaths is increasing at a slower rate, the data showed. The global average daily, num daily number of new infections over the past seven days stands at more than 600,000, an increase of 68% over the seven days average in mid-June. At the same time, the average number of daily deaths stands at 9,350, an increase of 20% compared with the beginning of July. The gap between the number of infections and the number of deaths is most noticeable in the countries currently added hit by the pandemic. The novel coronavirus has killed more than 4.25 million people worldwide since the start of the pandemic. But the World Health Organization estimates that the overall toll could be two or two, three times higher than official records due to the excess mortality that is directly and indirectly linked to COVID-19. And with that, we move to sport news. Estelle on Olympic Games, Jamaica soft seen errors banned for posting footage of a brutery. Jamaican sprint queen Elaine Topsy error prompted a red climb down from social media giant Facebook after, after being banned for posting victory at the Tokyo Olympic Games. Topsy error put up video on the Facebook owned platform Instagram showing her win in the 200 meter on Tuesday when she completed an unprecedented. Women's double double in the 100 meter and 200 meter at the Rio and Tokyo Games. Justifiably proud of her achievement, Topsy Era later revealed she had been temporarily suspended because of rights issues. The action prompted this belief among runners' followers on social media, with many questioning the logic of preventing an athlete sharing her own moment of victory. The International Olympic Committee jealously guard its broadcasting rights which generates billions of dollars for which generates billions of dollars for the organization from global TV networks, particularly NBC in the United States. Plus, Lachester's Fofana suffers broken leg. Lachester's defender Wesley Fofana said on Thursday he suffered a broken leg in a side free in a side season friendly against Bellarelli. Fofana sustained the fractured fibula when he was tackled by Benvelli forward Ninov the second half at the King Power Stadium on Wednesday. The France on the 21 center bank back had lengthy treatment on the pitch, including being given oxygen before he was stretched off. Fofana excelled for the 40s last season after he joined from St. Estenio in October. He made 38 appearances as Leicester's finished fifth in the Premier League and won the FA Cup for the first time in India history. Bufana's injury is a major blow to Leicester ahead of the new Premier League season. They also play in the community shoot against Manchester City at West Bloom on Saturday. And with that, we've come to the end of the Gallery TV News Bulletin this hour. Don't forget to join us again by 4 p.m. for yet another update. I remain Titulayo Olamide. Thanks for watching and do have a lovely afternoon. to
all Lagos residents, especially owners of landed properties. Payment of land use charge has now been made easy through an online platform known as Lola. Lola is Lagos online assistance platform where payment of land use charge is possible through a WhatsApp only message on 0815-433-3883. This Lola platform initiated by the Lagos State Ministry of Finance will make the payment of land use charge possible anytime, any day, and anywhere without any third party involvement. For more information, please visit www.lola.ng or heluc.lagostate.gov.ng. Lola, the easiest way to pay your Lagos State land use charge. Always remember, Ibigai Pileko Achumoshini. 